So thank you for introduction. I am Hayate Yamasaki, working as an assistant professor at the University of Tokyo. Today I'd like to talk about a recent development on time-efficient constant space overhead for tolerant quantum computation. You may care about number of qubits required for, for tolerant quantum computation, but you also care about the time overhead, the extra time required for, for tolerant quantum computation. We achieve improvement on both simultaneously, not only not based on using LDPC code, but develop new techniques based on concatenated code. The work is based, this talk is based on a joint work with Masato Kawashi, a, a professor at the University of Tokyo. Before talking about detail of our construction, I'd like to uh, explain a broad view on what I am working on. Uh, I, in, in, a, in Tokyo, I am being, I've been working on uh, I, I've been working on laying a theoretical foundation to connect a recent advance of quantum technology and the huge advance of our IT society based on these technologies. To achieve this, I'm working on several different aspects. All of these are connected in my mind, but looks a bit different for you. So one thing is I develop views for quantum algorithms, mainly for uh, quantum machine learning, machine la accelerating classical machine learning tasks. Uh, I work on several different, different uh, algorithms that require, that achieves significant speed up, but without uh, restrictive assumptions. And also, so I, I develop some, uh, I also apply, clarify how to apply it for accelerating tasks for classical neural networks. But the uh, most important thing for, uh, for people here is how to achieve these useful algorithms. So for this, I, uh, I this here I talk about how to uh, implement general STQST using uh, in a time efficient and constant space overhead way. And also I work on several different things on error correction. One is random circuit, and the other is a bosonic encoding, encoding of qubit into CV systems using so-called GKP code. I, I also work on resource theories and a practical framework for testing quantum resources required at, or for implementing these things at a theoretical site. So this talk is about Fortran quantum computation, Fortran uh, Fortran quantum computation, and uh, quantum computation is given by represented by uh, quantum circuit with depth uh, with, with with w number of qubits and the depth d, but you cannot directly implement this original circuit on a on an actual quantum device, of course, because you have a noise. Because of noise, you may uh, so the, you 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 cannot obtain the correct result if you just implement this on the different device. To do this, uh, we need to implement uh, use a noisy circuit at the physical error rate p zero to uh, to still simulate this original circuit with a, a small error overall error epsilon. The task here is to give a target error epsilon and the original circuit representing quantum computation. We perform noisy quantum circuit to simulate the original circuit. This noisy circuit is called, called Fortran circuit. The only way that we know to achieve this is to use for quantum error correcting codes that can suppress logical error rate arbitrarily. In particular, threshold theorem says that if the physical error rate is below some constant threshold, then we, we can arbitrarily suppress the logical error rate to achieve the overall rate epsilon. To achieve the over, uh, overall or or error epsilon for simulation, basically each, the logical error rate for each gate and operations needs to be suppressed below epsilon divided by the circuit size to be implemented, the circuit size of original circuit, which is given by with time depth. But to do this, we need to use a uh, error current code, and uh, we need to use a more number of qubits, which, uh, which uh, we represent as a space overhead. And also, we, we also need to implement each gate without on a logical qubit, without, uh, without uh, on, a logical, on a logical qubit encoded in the error current code. So this incurs additional time overhead. Indeed. The ob indeed, the obstacle, main obstacle in, in realizing this FTQC is the overheads. At the moment, we know two conventional approaches to achieve FTQC. 
But both of these suffers from, both of these approaches conventionally suffers from this obstacle of overhead. One approach is to use quantum, LDP, uh, quantum low density parity check codes, or LDPC code for short, such as surface code. If you use surface code, you can encode single logical qubit into d times d patch of uh, patch of codes. So where d is a distance, code distance, and the, as you increase the distance, you can suppress error more. But to do this, you need a more you should use more logical qubit, which in the case of surface codes scales d square. So you you need to use a large number of qubit, physical qubits for each encoding. But if you go back to the original, uh, go back to the 90s, yeah, the original proposal of uh, FTQC is uh, based, was based on concatenated code. Uh, concat in, the, in this approach, you encode single logical qubit into uh, some, some small fixed code, such as seven qubit code, to suppress error to some extent. And to suppress errors more, you, you recursively represent each logical qubit as a logical qubit of another 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 seven qubit code. So this recursive process, each each of this recursive procedure is called concatenation, and the error can be suppressed as we increase the concatenation level. But in any approach, uh, we need we need a polylogarithm curry growing overhead, uh, overhead in space in both space and time. And this polylog you may think polylogarithm overhead is small, but uh, this diverges to infinity on large scales as we increase the uh, circuit size to be implemented. And in, in particular, in the experiments, the number of qubits, this is a quite uh, quite uh, variable resource. So this uh, polyrhythm overhead is indeed too, still too large to realize FTQC. Uh, so we need to reduce space overhead. Uh, and also at the same time, uh, to in order to achieve that speed up without canceling it out, we also need to optimize the time overhead at the same time. To meet this demand, more recently, uh, it is proposed to use a quantum LDPC code, uh, another class of quantum LDPC code from not, not uh, another, uh, a more recent class of quantum LDPC code with a non-vanishing rate of logical qubit per physical qubit. In this, uh, in particular, the n number of logical qubits scales linearly as we increase the physical qubit. Using this class of code, we can achieve that we can make the space overhead to constant, rather than poly growing polylogarithmically. This this we, uh, this achieves significant saving of number of qubits. Yeah, so motivated by this, these days people are interested in uh, interested in optimizing quantum LDPC codes, and uh, as you see, a lot of work has been done in, also in this conference. However, existing protocol incurs polynomially large time overhead. Uh, and uh, in, 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 in particular, there are several ways to implement each implement gates on this code, such as gate teleportation, code deformation, and lattice surgery. But none of them has been tr proven to be time efficient in general. And also, potentially more problematically, the current proof of the existence of the threshold for this class of protocol Assume that the coda runs in the must run in the constant time, even for the growing growing size of the co code blocks. So, uh, uh, so the f from the fundamental perspective, the the question raised in the original work by Gottesman was whether we can resolve this apparent space-time trade-off in FTQC. We are interested in solving this. In, especially in the setting where we also take into account the actual runtime of the decoder that may grow on, grow on the large scales. In this work, we, result, we, de we newly develop a protocol to achieve time efficient constant space overhead FTQC. The idea, is to, the idea is to construct and use a new class of concatenated code that achieves non vanishing rate rather than quantum DPC code. As we increase, so for this class of concatenated code, as we increase the concatenated level L, we prove that the number of logical qubits grows linearly as we increase as the physical number of physical qubits per code block. The number of the number of physical qubits per code block still grows as we increase the logical uh, as we increase the concatenation level, 
But we also show that uh, the error suppression is the uh, error is suppressed double exponentially as we increase the concatenation level as in the conventional concatenated code. With these plans, we achieved that uh, we show that our protocol achieves a constant space overhead, and at, at the same time, time, time overhead can be as small as quasi polygasmic This quasi polygasmic time overhead is significantly smaller than the polynomial time overhead of the existing constant overhead protocol, while it is slightly larger than the polygasmic overhead in the conventional protocol. Compared to the con existing constant space overhead protocol based on LDPC code, the merit of a protocol is the, to achieve time efficient protocol, uh, time efficient, time efficient while achieving constant space over constant space overhead FTQC. We also uh, another merit is that we, our protocol has a provable existence of the threshold, even with a decoder that can run in a growing time on larger codes. Remarkably, we achieved this uh, by using concatenated code rather than quantum DPC code. In the following, I explain, briefly explain the detail of uh, the, our, okay, our main technical contributions to achieve these results. The crucial technique in a protocol is to develop a concatenated code with a non-vanishing rate. Conventionally, uh, we can concatenate, uh, for example, thin seven qubit code to suppress errors, but uh, if we if we, sub, if we concatenate the seven qubit codes, the required number of physical qubits per logical qubit grows exponentially as we increase the concatenation level. The idea here is to use a generalized general class of of a, a family of a family of quantum codes that generalizes seven qubit code, which is called which we call quantum Hamming codes. Quantum the family of quantum Hamming codes starts with a seven qubit code. But uh, but as we increase the number of logical number of physical qubit, it can it can include that incre it can include many logical qubit per code block, and the rate approaches to one very quickly as we increase the code size. The idea here is to at the physical level we start with a, a small simple seven qubit code, and to suppress error. Then as we suppress the error. We start to use the higher rate code to achieve the to achieve the more better qubit efficiency at higher concatenation levels. We analytically show that uh, this 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 approach indeed achieves a constant space overhead, uh, non, uh, achieves a non-vanishing overall rate of physical qubit of logical qubit per physical qubit, uh, even if we increase the concatenation level arbitrarily. We also numerically show that our code, uh, the benefit of our code can be order of ma magnitudes already at the smaller concatenation level, a uh, few concatenation levels. Another matter here, uh, another matter for constructing FTQC is the existence of the efficient decoder. Indeed, the original, pro the initial proposal of constant space over FTQC based on, uh, con uh, based on quantum LDPC code uh was uh at the time at the time when uh, initially at the time when the protocol for constant space over FTQC with FTPC code was proposed there was no efficient decoder until later research uh, constructed a sufficiently efficient one for hyper, uh, for a class of hypergraph product code called quantum expander codes but here, for the for our class of quantum code, we explicitly construct an efficient decoder. In particular, our code is a generation of thin seven qubit code that has distance three. So, since it's a distance three, we can correct uh, the code can correct at most one error. The stabilizer generalizes a uh, conventional seven qubit code, and for this uh, for this stabilizer, the stabilizer is carefully designed in in, in such a way that the syndrome bit ring. It represents uh, is becomes a uh, binary representation of the location of the single error. And for the for the general class of concatenated code, so, so the weight of the syndrome may be may not be constant in these codes, but for the con for the concatenated code, there is a conventional way to extract high weight syndromes based on uh, based on Niels quantum error correction or Steen's error correction using a fault tolerant preparation of the 
code words. Using this decoder, we also give a full explicit construction of the overall Fortran protocol. As in the conventional protocol, a protocol compiles, uh, recursively compiles level level circuit. Uh, start from, starting from original circuit, a uh, protocol recursively compiles level level circuit into level level minus one circuit to implement a logical level level circuit iteratively until we obtain the level zero circuit, which is a physical circuit, Fortran circuit. Our contribution here is the full explicit construction include of protocol, including decoder, if gates, and how we compile the circuits, and also give, gave a thorough analysis of runtime. As in the conventional protocol, our protocol, our protocol recursively replace each level L operation with a gadget, which is a level L minus circuit to implement logical operations, and then insert error correction gadget in between. For our quantum humming codes, the only known transversal gates are logical atomar applied on all the logical qubit, or C0 applied on all the logical qubit, or poly gates for each logical qubit given by logical operator. All the other gates are performed by gate teleportation, and for this we clarify how to fortunately prepare a jelly qubit for a class of concatenated code. For our protocol, we use a growing size of codes. So still with this construction, uh, the, existence of, uh, the existence of threshold is non-trivial. Nevertheless, we show, that we show that our protocol probably has a threshold for a conventional general error model called local stochastic error model. In this error model, uh, we given a circuit, this, this, this error model is a circuit level error model where S different locations in a circuit of physical qubit may become faulty with probability at a physical rate to the power of S. Uh, for, for, and for the, on, the, on the faulty locations, we, we arbitrary error, arbitrary, arbitrary noise given by any CPTP map may happen. For this error model, uh, we show that uh, we, for this error model, for example, we take a, in, we, we take a parameter of quantum humming codes that increases linearly as we increase the concatenated level. And then we, by induction, we show that as long as level element circuit undergoes local stochastic error model, logical level error circuit also undergoes a local stochastic error model. And also logical error rate uh, is upper bounded by the maximum probability of having two errors in each, each so-called extended rectangle, or X-REC for short. X-REC is a part of level L minus circuit, level L minus one circuit of gadget that, that corresponds to level L gadget for level L operation and the uh, error correcting gadget uh, in, um, adjacent level L, adjacent error correction gadget. Unlike the conventional protocol based on con concatenated code, the size of X-REC in our protocol grows polynomially as we increase the code size. But we, but we still obtain the, uh, but we, but, but using this, uh, using this recursive, re uh, using this recursive relation, the overall logical error rate is upper bounded by some, by some, uh, by using the same technique as the conventional concatenated codes, but the dependence dependency on the code size appears as a as a as a coefficient of the geometric sequence in the exponent. Conventionally, the geometric uh, conventionally uh, the sum of the geometric sequence is a constant is a constant coefficient converges to the uh, provides the upper bound of the overall logical error rate. What we have shown is that the geometric sequence with a polynomially growing coefficient still achieves the same error suppression rate, uh, same error suppression upper bound. At the end of the talk, I would like to uh, discuss the implication of this bound towards scalable architectures. In our construction, the size of X-Flex may grow polynomially in the code size. But we still achieve, we, the, our protocol still has, has a threshold because the logical error rate decays doubly exponentially as we uh, increase the congratulation level. 
uh, and indeed, this decays much faster than the growth of the size of XREC. This implies that we have, as we increase the concatenation level, we, get, we obtain more flexibility in architecture design on large scales. For example, as we increase the concatenation level, we can wait more time for the classical decoding. This is why we can achieve a existence of threshold even with a growing time of decoder. Indeed, one challenge in manufacturing um, in using uh, LDPC code is the manufacture of the large surface code chip with a, uh, with a precise with a precise full control of all the qubits on the chip. Here I show uh, one one proposal of the uh, of this uh, the of the layout of the chip, but to achieve the meaningful, uh, useful Fortran quantum computation, we may need uh, millions of qubits or billions of qubits in the in practice. But then we one may but one may reason that we may need a very large chip, like as large as stadium or some very big rice field. In the worst case, you may wonder. And the question here is how could we controllably scale up this approach? So you may wonder this. And uh, once our, our construction uh, implies one possible solution based on concatenation. Is basically, as we increase the concatenation level, this can be used as a abstraction layer. So each concatenated small block can be used as a unit that emits some code words with a lower error rate. And we can, once the error rate is low, we can have more flexibility in concatenating it for scaling up. Our protocol opens a way for this low overhead FTQC by concatenating small size modular parts. In conclusion, we developed a time efficient constant space overhead FTQC. So our protocol achieves constant space overhead and yet with a small sh short time overhead. We give explicit protocol and proof of existence threshold and this implies more flexibility in the architecture design. Remarkably, we achieve this by reviving the technique of concatenation and we resolve several problems that we are facing in the LDPC code by opening an alternative way of low overhead FTQC. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Thank you for the nice talk. I'm really a big fan of this work. Uh, since you mentioned uh, modular architecture, yes, I I, I, I try to understand this idea of like the, the uh, each layer. Uh, sorry, uh, qubits at each layer forming a module, but like, I just couldn't figure out whether this will actually apply with like higher levels because like qubits will actually be like mixed in different layers, right? Yes, yeah, qubits are, yeah, so suppose that you have a seven qubit code, so you have a, some device that emits uh, encodes seven qubit code. Yeah. So this may, you, you have a seven pins that for each represent a physical qubit, but uh, you can basically combine multiple of them, seven these devices. So, so when you yeah. combine, are you envisioning, w w what, what would be in the center? Like when you combine, if you have a low, low error rate modules, s multiple modules at very low error rate, then it will be easier to, you have more freedom. You can take time or you can take more resource to just combine it. I mean, you, you can consider that, for example, if you have a compute, classical computer, this has a very small error rate, so it's easy to combine multiple computers to perform distributed tasks. Basically, oh, we, I see. We, but we, but you're still assuming like a uh, module to module uh, connection being for example, like for example, uh, okay, yes, okay. yeah, for example. But uh, we, we we cannot currently do this for quantum device because we have a severe demand on the error rate. If the error rate is very small, we may use more longer lossy channel, for example. 
yeah, so we have more freedom. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, in, in principle. Hi, um, do you think, hey, hey. Uh, do you think there's anything to be gained by considering like a different base code for the concatenation? So if I had some generalized like 15 qubit Reed Muller code instead of the Steen code, and then maybe this has like a different transversal gate set for like the, this like base code, do you think this gives anything to the procedure or do you think it's all like the codes you've chosen are like about as good as you're gonna do? Uh, in, pr in principle, yes. Yeah, if you have a higher rate code, then you can obtain constant error, constant overall constant rate. This is possible. Mm -hmm. But the whole point of our construction is to fully construct all the components required for FTQC, including decoder, gates, compilation. So yeah. if you, you carefully choose a code that has efficient decoder and uh, implementable all the gates, then yeah. yes, it will be possible. But uh, in general, in the full general, it's not trivial, I think. But yeah, yeah okay. But yeah. do you think like this gate set is, is fine? Or do you think there are, if I can find some base codes for the concatenation that have some different gate set, is there like a better gate set in principle? Or it d as long as you have like some gates and you know how to do everything, it's all like it doesn't really matter the, the specifics so much? If it covers, if it supports universal gate set, it's fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for this very inspiring talk. So uh, we know that quantum humming code, and uh, uh, sorry, the the um, the stabilizer of it is highly non-local, which means that you, uh, when you do central measurement, you need to use your ANSIDA to check a lot of of your data qubits, right? So, uh, so can you please maybe comment a little bit more on yeah. on, uh, uh, on the time or uh, on the time overhead of one syndrome cycle? Like, how long does it take compared with the uh, or, or or what is the coherence time requirement? Okay, okay. Uh, so the so so the way to extract syndrome is different from surface code. So in the surface code, you prepare a physical ancilla and then interact them with uh, all, all the qubits on the support of stabilizer generators. But we don't do this. We, we, we do not have to do that for concatenate code. In the, code, in the case of concatenate code, we can for tolerantly prepare the code words. And basically, Niels error correction acts like, uh, is implemented by performing teleportation. And uh, in the measurement of for the get quantum teleportation, we can simultaneously extract all the syndrome at once. This is made possible because we can full tolerantly prepare the code words. This is a particular property of concatenated codes. So how error correction works is different in LDPC codes and concatenated code. Does this answer your question? Uh, uh, so maybe I missed it a little bit, but uh, uh, so, uh, so your quantum humming code is the outer code, right? Sorry, outer code. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, by, by outer code, I mean you... Uh, it's concatenated code, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so your logical qubit is some, uh, uh, is encoded in the in the seven qubit code. Uh, right. we, we use seven qubit code to decrease error, but uh, it is, it, it is, uh, it is a con concatenated code, so it, yeah. it, it has yeah. a, like, a iterative recursive structures. Yes, yeah. So how error correction works so be uh, a bit different from. Uh, uh, so um, I'm still wondering, like, what is the rule of your outer quantum hum quantum humming codes? I mean, what is the effect if you scale it up of your outer code? Like, uh, so here you have you have this two to the power r minus one. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, as we increase the concatenation level, the requirement here is to increase this code parameter R, so that we have a better efficiency on the larger scales. So this is a, we use a higher rate code at higher concatenation level to achieve uh, constant yeah. overall rate. So yeah. this is a requirement. 
Yeah, I got this. Yeah, this is yeah. a difference from conventional concatenated code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, thanks. All right, can we thank the speaker again? Thank you. Thank you.